Welcome back, friends, Romans, and countrymen. I am Un, and this is Dark Savior. But come on, you knew that. We have just gained access to the Lavian Ruins, where we will be continuing our hunt for the evil, so let's go for it. The Lavian Ruins are kind of a riddle-based puzzle dungeon, much like one that appeared in Landstalker. Although the one in Landstalker, the riddles were kind of hard to figure out, and uh, a lot of people got stuck there, myself included, for a period of time. Uh, whereas the uh, puzzles here in the Lavian Ruins are really very easy. Uh, a lot of the times you don't even have to read the clues to figure out what you're supposed to do. But of course I will read them. And Garion feels the romance of the ancients. He's a protagonist that's not afraid to be a goofball, and I appreciate that. Anyway, our first challenge is to take the Wandering King to his resting place. Well, let's see. We've got an open coffin up there. We've got this mummy kind of uh, roaming around on these floating platforms. And just in case we're too dim to get it from that, there's even an example mummy in his coffin over there. So, we will use Garion's sword to uh, gently spank the uh, Wandering King along on his way. You would think uh, using his sword repeatedly to slash a mummy would leave bandages flying all over the room, but apparently the Wandering King is a very resilient sword. Perhaps that's why they made him king. Anyway, we should have him back to his uh, home base there in a few moments. Do -do -do. And... There you go, sir. Now, no wandering out on your own again. It's dangerous out here. Uh, if you hadn't guessed by looking at it, all that uh, flowing sand on the floor is Death Pit. Of course, it's Dark Savior style Death Pit, which means that uh, Jack will save you if you have enough points, which you probably will. But Death Pit all the same. In any case, we're going to use our nice key, and... Long ago, on the seventh moon of the Lavian calendar, year 280, the good people of Lavian fell under the possession of an evil entity. The king of that ancient period... Sultan IV called this demonic being Bilano. In their language, Bilano meant soul snatcher. Since no one knew Bilano's real presence, neighbors turned against neighbors, husbands against wives. Even parents suspected their children, and soon murder was rampant. The very souls of the citizens of Lavian had been maliciously corrupted by the singular evil force called Bilano. Yes, this is where we get some backstory on Bilan, or Bilano as they called him back in the day, although that sounds more like a seasoning to me. Anyway, let's uh, move on and find our next hint. By the way, those murals are, in fact, the only place in the game that uses voice acting. Don't know why they felt it necessary for this section and nowhere else, but whatever. Anyway, our next riddle is twin princes go into their sleeping pods, but what goes in the third pod? Anyway... The Twin Princes are obviously the skulls we saw back here. And the sleeping pods, well, those should be pretty obvious. Whether or not I'll be able to actually do that is somewhat less obvious. Alright, nothing but net. There's some sweet Georgia Brown for you. But what goes in the third pot? Well, we've used skulls so far, and hey, Darian has one of those in his head. Not such a giant one, but apparently it's good enough for the riddle. So, we can grab our next key, and our next bit of voiceover. Lavian citizens, under the sinister curse of Bilano, attacked the palace, and soon the city streets of Lavian were strewn with corpses and unspeakable atrocities. Once praised throughout the lands for its benevolence and hailed as the home of the gods, Lavian was now on the verge of ruination by the evil deeds of its own people robbed of their souls by Bilano. Yeah, this uh, all fits in quite nicely with what we know about Bilan so far. Incidentally, the Lavian king was named Sultan IV, but they also have a prime minister named Chancellor. Okay, we'll skirt the edge of this room and get our next hint. 
which is, the dragon's mouth is only dangerous when it's open, twisters in the dune are only dangerous when you are afraid. Well, I'm not afraid. And yep, it's a platform. Very nice. The next part of our hint is that the dragon's mouth is only dangerous when it's open, so let's close it. And that turns this twister platform into a moving twister platform, and that's precisely what we need. Yoink! Oh, let's live dangerously. Ah, almost made it. Oh, God damn it! it kicks me all the way back to the entrance. Oh well, at least the puzzles are still solved, so I will uh, hasten back to where I left off. Sorry about that, folks. Mind your head there, Garion. King Sultan IV sent royal messengers throughout the lands to summon a revered biologist by the name of Uda. Sultan IV decreed Uda a knight, and as leader of the Lavian forces, bestowed upon him the royal shield of armor crested with a blue rose. Thus honorably decorated, Uda set off to fulfill his noble duty to slay the dreaded evil Bilano. So, Uda has a silent W? That's kind of unusual, but whatever it takes. Uh, I believe we are currently above the Wandering King area. Yep, we are. Interesting. Well, I think it's interesting anyway. Pretty good draw distance there for a Saturn game. Next clue. All the keys are in the box, but again, maybe not. Well, that would indicate the key has to be somewhere else. Quick and easy answer? It's here. Easy peasy. Milano had been observed heading towards the very symbol of the Lavian countryside, Mount Majerna, the Mountain of the Gods. Upon receiving official word that Milano was ascending towards the peak of Majerna, Uda set off in pursuit. The reason Milano went to Mount Majerna still remains a mystery. However, Mount Majerna erupted that year, and it is said this occurs only once every 500 years. I think you got cut off a bit there, narrator lady. I think that's just an issue with the emulation. But anyway, well, let me just uh, ride on over here and grab my clue. Sometimes a sword comes in handy, mainly to break things. A fallen pedestal is also useful, mainly to step on it. I don't know, I think a sword is useful mainly to kill people, but breaking things is a good second. Then again, you probably do use your sword a little more often to break things in this game than you do to kill people. Well, I missed the last one there, and that's the one I really need, so I'll have to ride on back. No matter, though, we have time. Also, are these... obelisks made of, like... Ah, oh, fuck me running. Well, apparently we were at a checkpoint, which is nice. As I was saying, are these uh, obelisks made out of paper mache or what? You would think a little whack with a fairly ordinary seeming sword wouldn't uh, have quite such, uh, such an effect on a big pillar of stone, but I guess that's why I don't design games for a living. Much as I would like to, it'd probably be a little more fulfilling than my current job, but I can't bitch too much, it pays the bills. Anyway, now that I've done that correctly, we can take our key. High atop the peak of Mount Majerna, Uda came face to face with the demonic Bilano, and the battle commenced. Their fierce confrontation persisted relentlessly for three days and three nights. Neither side abated for a moment. It appeared as if the battle would continue for eternity. Ah, 
Uh, here we have to use some of the uh, trick that we just learned in the last room, knocking over more of the paper mache pillars. And now that I look at the time, we're just about out of time. So, next time on I Played a Thing Dark Savior, the next clue, the next riddle, the next key, and so on and so forth. See you then!